Uh, you got anything for us today? No, no, no. I've kind of just been taking it easy as far as <laughs> any uh, smart-ass intros. Yeah. Doesn't always have to have a little interlude to that. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, yeah. yeah. I should probably get one ready soon. Yeah. But anyways, what's up, everybody? Hey. Another episode of Knife Funk. I'm going to say this on top of the show, just for anybody who doesn't know. But uh, give us a following on Instagram, at the Night Funk Podcast. Yeah. Uh... And if you're there, click our link tree. You can find our TikTok and our YouTube. Uh, and our Spotify. Probably by this point, we should have full YouTube videos up. Because um, I plan on releasing the last two previous from this oh. episode. So, yeah. Check that out if you haven't. But for those listening on audio, you can still find us in the same places. Yeah. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and those other two no one cares about. Your mama's pussy. <laughs> <laughs> your mama's pussy.net <laughs> but anyway when, when we get bigger we should make that a website what your mom's pussy that, like, yeah. like our official website not official like uh, it links to our website oh yeah because you know you can buy the url and then it'll just like direct you to the website mm-hmm. yeah so we can do that okay that'd be fun <laughs> why is this in your search history i swear i was looking up a podcast your mom's what the fuck do you found the pictures <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mom <laughs> Uh, uh, what you been up to? Uh, just life, not killing more cats. Yeah, yeah. We had a little incident at the end of the last episode where, dude, I was ruined that night. I was at home, I couldn't sleep, and yeah. I, then I dreamt about it. Ugh. yeah, dude. Yeah, it looked me in the eyes as it died. Uh, yeah. Re- reminder for anybody out there: kick your car. Ch- yeah, check your car before you start it up. Yeah, if you are like if you visit a friend and you uh if you plan on leaving early if your car is still warm kittens or cats will try to jump in there to get warm any small animal small animals possums raccoons crackheads crackheads yeah Yeah. well they would probably survive they'll just (laughs) they'll just ask for a dollar for their pain yeah they're they're indestructible (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so what are we talking about today uh oh so today we're talking about concerts, shows, uh, music venues, and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Because uh, I've been to a lot of shows in my time. I haven't been in to one in a long time, Same. though. The last time I went to a show was probably... Damn. It must have been like eight or nine years ago. Oh. It's been a fucking hot minute. Yeah. I remember, because I used to love going to like those... like local metal hardcore shows and mm-hmm. stuff. And I remember the last one that I went to, I was there for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and then I was like, I don't think I like this anymore. Yeah, like, too many I, people fucking crowd kill now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is crowd killing was fun for a while, but after a while you're just like, I don't really don't feel like getting into a fight today yeah. or dealing with somebody's bullshit. But it wasn't even just that, but sometimes like if you know you're going into like an environment that's potentially dangerous, mm-hmm. there's a lot of yuppies that show up and turn it into a big deal. Yeah, and that's really the off-putting part. But not just that, but sometimes people show up to start some shit. Now this hasn't always happened at like hardcore or metal shows. It's been to like just normal like music festivals yeah. and stuff where people show up and you they're know, just they, looking for a fight. Yeah, they they look for a fight. They yeah. pull out a knife. They they they're they're intentionally trying to start shit with security, which yeah. is just weird. Like you got nothing better to do, dog. But, anyways. Yeah. No, f- me for the last show that I went to was before, right before COVID. I went to go see uh, Hobo Johnson. Really? Yeah, and it was oh. a good show. He put on a great show. I haven't heard anything from him in a long time. Oh, really? Yeah. I th- he, I think he kind of just gave up. Oh, really? I don't know because I feel like I think he still tours, but like he's doing what the like other indie people do is they just tour in the areas they live. Like he does yeah. a lot of shows, I think, in like in California. I used to always be pissed off the fact that every time that System of a Down was on tour, it's only in California or in Las in, Vegas or Las Vegas in Europe. They don't go anywhere else. They don't go to New York. They don't go to Atlanta. They don't go to Florida. They don't go They'll anywhere go. on the east side. I think the furthest I've seen them come out this way is maybe Chicago, 
Yeah, but, but it's like a random show they added at the end. Yeah, like a lot yeah. of times it'd be like a quick reunion show. It's like, what? Yeah. How is it a quick reunion show? It's literally a stadium. Yeah. They're just like, oh, we just felt like doing this real quick. It's like, like what what happened? And With it's the- crazy because when they announce these shows, they sell out yeah. immediately. You know, I've looked into a lot of like their history and stuff because I've always been curious, like why... Why had they been on hiatus for the longest time? Because they always kind of just didn't give a solid answer. Yeah. And I think the most recent thing, it, it, it was, fi- I it think was it, Darren, wasn't it? No, I heard the one that I heard from was from John. Mm. And John had talked about like, oh, it's mo- it's mostly because of Surge. Mm. And they're and they're like, like what? He's like, well, Surge thinks that he's like the high. He he thinks like he's like the biggest like the bigger artist out of all of them given he is the front man right but he basically wanted i guess more recognition or more money for the time spent on them tour and as as opposed to them divvying it uh four ways and then there was some some speculated that it was also the fact that like uh serge didn't get along with john uh politically no no yeah because john's a very he's very he's conservative yeah he's he's very conservative serge and darren are kind of like uh you know your typical left-leaning kind of guys they're a lot more liberal and i think shawl just retarded (laughs) he just plays bass yeah he's a dj too you know that yeah yeah that's crazy He's a cool dude. I know he yeah. was a part of like some kind of like underground rap group too, where he played bass in them. It was like, it was like one of those new metal rap groups. Yeah, you know, wasn't it like uh, Bad Brains or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I know. Recently, I was uh, uh, at a friend's house, and he was like, "Dude, did you know that Limp Biscuit still puts out music?" I'm like, yeah. "What?" He's like, "Dude, look up Limp Biscuit. Their most recent video. It is the weirdest, cringiest <laughs> shit I've ever seen." And I did. I watched it. And I was just like, they were doing like a face swap video yeah. of them all being like different like dictators or presidential people. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what does this? Ha- are they trying to make a political statement? Because all yeah. I see is like one of them fought like uh, face swapping with Tom Cruise grilling hot dogs, and then the rest of them is like one of them was a like, King Jong Un, one of them was <laughs> Donald Trump, one of them was Biden, okay. and then a fourth one was I, some guy I couldn't even make out. Like the 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 face swap like yeah. Just looked terrible. It just looked bad. It because I could barely tell. Like this could literally be anybody. This could be the best band ever. It probably was the Chinese like president guy. Oh, uh, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Yeah. Xi Jinping or whatever the fuck yeah. his name is. Xi Jinping. I'm not trying to be racist. <laughs> I, 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 I literally don't know. Yeah. I think his name sounds something like that. But yeah, something Ping maybe. I don't yeah. Know. But going back on the whole thing of shows and bands and stuff. I'm trying to think. What what I know the first show I ever went to was with you. Yeah, it was and, the Surge show, right? Yeah, we went yeah. to the, we went to see Surge Tankian live when he was doing his um what Empty Walls tour. Mm-hmm. And that was a pretty fun show. Yeah. It was only two groups. It was just Surge and then Fair to Midland opened for them. And Was it Fair to Midland? It was Fair to Midland, yeah. I dude, I remember like like it was yesterday. And yeah. I know this because uh, one of my friends from high school went mm-hmm. to that show. He was like up front, and he like was obsessed with Fair to Midland. Whenever like we came back from that show, oh really? Yeah, he kept up with them for a while, but apparently they only dropped two albums before they broke up. Mm. And I don't know whether that was just because nobody really like knew they about didn't really them. Take off or anything? Yeah, yeah, like that happens a lot with a lot of bands, yeah. man. I mean, that you happens still get them residuals. Yeah, I mean yeah. that happens a lot with metal bands, especially. Mm-hmm. So many like metal bands come out of the woodwork, and they don't like just they just don't get any recognition for their yeah. music. And the, the or their or the one the the thing a lot with like uh, especially heavier bands like fucking like just like straight up death metal bands, mm-hmm. they just fight all the time because they're just so angry. Yeah, and it it's is just true. Like, all right, calm down, guys, and then they break up because they couldn't you know get their shit together. Yeah, I remember um, back in high school, the big talk was the fact that like um, the band Emir was beefing with Acacia Strain <laughs> because they like because Emir had made a reference to Acacia Strain in one of their songs, oh, really? and they made a reference to them in one of their songs, and they basically uh. were just calling each other out. And then for the longest time, they had like I think they literally almost broke out into a fight because uh, they ended up getting on a show ticket together, oh, okay. and. Um, Obviously, like the Acacia Strain guys are much older, and uh, 
and uh, yeah, guess they immediately were just like, yeah, we're not we're not dealing with this bullshit. And I don't know exactly what happened, yeah. but I know years later they squashed the beef and they toured together, <laughs> and it was called the Mortal Enemies tour. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. It was all a ruse. They they just planned it out. Maybe. Yeah. Now I remember. Um, what was it? The whole thing with a uh, member job for a cowboy. Mm-hmm. Like I think they're still around, but it's like none of the original members are in it. Yeah. Yeah, like they they were like they would go do a show or do I guess do a tour and then they come back and they lost the guitarist and then they could do it again and they lost another or the bassist or something and they replaced it with someone. And they just kept going until I think it was either the lead singer or one of the guitarists was still there. Mm-hmm. And then they came back and it was no one. <laughs> Yeah, the one that I always yeah. thought was super strange too was like the whole um, story timeline of Killswitch Engage. How mm-hmm. like they they had a they had a guy before uh, Howard Jones, you know, yeah. the one that we know from like End of Heartache album, you know. Yeah, the white guy. Uh, what? The white guy. No, Howard Jones is the black guy. No, I know, and the guy before him was the white guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's well, what I'm saying. For whatever reason, he just abandoned the band. They didn't really give him a reason. Howard Jones took over. He was with them for like two or three albums, and then he ended up leaving because of complications with diabetes and touring. Uh, the reason the first guy, if I remember correctly, my buddy, uh, 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 he kept up with the metal scene and the heavy music scene more than mm-hmm. I did. He said his, um, he got a little, um, a little more religious, and he didn't like the direction the band was going. Mm-hmm. Like they were too... Um, I mean, they were too, like, living in the rock and roll lifestyle for him. Ah. So he was kind of like, yeah, I'm dipping now for a bit. So, yeah. Yeah. I always hate when, like, people... He came back. Yeah, he came back after Howard Jones left. Yeah. And he sounds great. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I haven't really kept up with their newer stuff. I know Howard Jones started a new band, and I guess, yeah. like, I don't know if that band tours a lot. I think they're just a band that puts out music as opposed to one that tours. Mainly because I know he left kill switch because touring became such a hard thing for him and mm. and being diabetic yeah um because i mean i know that's always been the case for most traveling like artists of any kind is yeah, like just, like touring takes a toll on you like i got a buddy uh his band um uh he used to be uh my drummer mm-hmm. um and his band he he moved out to california that way he could be with the band and everything uh they're on tour right now Really? They're going all over the place. They, they, he was trying to get a, a show up here in Atlanta, mm-hmm. but uh, they chose uh, North Carolina instead. Mm. So it was like he was like, damn. I was like, fuck, dude, that sucks. But um, no, he's out there killing it. He's mm. a great drummer. What, what band is it? Uh, it's called Nerve. Nerve. N-E-R-V. Mm. Yeah. They're solid. Uh, listen to them. They're a lot of... Um, what genre? Uh, it's like... Um, it's like alternative metal or death metal. No, metal not core. death metal. It's kind of like it's kind of like um, God, who am I trying to compare it with? They're very soft. Like the guy doesn't do screams or anything like that. He just sings. He's a good, good singer. Okay. Um, you so, know, it has the metal sound. You know, the it's pretty good. Okay, so they're God smack. Yeah, pretty much. Ah, still on inside. No, it's not that. They're more. Um, it's a lighter sound. They're nice. You'll, uh, I'll show them to you later. Uh, for those listening, give them a sh- give them a try. I used to hate when I used to like talk about music with people, mm-hmm. and someone like throws out like, "Oh yeah, my favorite band is fucking like Buck Cherry." I'm like, "Shut up! Yeah, get out of here." Who the fuck? No. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I want to listen to Crazy Bitch for, <laughs> as a, as a way to entertain my. <laughs> or what's that other fucking song? Who sings that one song? It's the the. The lips of an angel, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, and so I hear your voice in a hand. It's, is it Creed? No, it's not Creed. Mm. It sounds. But Creed like is it. also one of those. Yeah. I heard the guy from Creed is a fucking douche. Yeah, he is. I heard. I heard this because somebody. Uh, he makes fun of himself like a lot because he's like, yeah, I was singing like that because I didn't know how to sing well, <laughs> and he's it, because he was trying to overcompensate. Now apparently he sounds fucking amazing. No, but from what, what I've heard is a relative of him, mm-hmm. of his, said, it's like, guys, you don't realize how much of a douchebag he is. Yeah. He showed up to my wedding uninvited and handed out headshots. <laughs> <laughs> 
bro. <laughs> yeah. He got really big again because of TikTok. Like this, he started yeah. like touring and shit again. But like, I think that kind of like petered out again. Yeah, because people realized that he was a fucking douche. I think that the, I think the same thing happened a little while with Fred Durst. Like for a while, Fred Durst was like mm. back in the scene again because he tried to like transition to like a uh, to like a different genre. Like mm-hmm. he tried doing just like death metal. And it just didn't really work out. And then he eventually... What do you call it? Hard Biscuit? (laughs) Who knows? The one that I always thought was really cool was that one time that Ice-T came back into the metal scene. Oh, yeah. With, uh, what's it called? Body Count? Uh, Is it Body Count? I think it's Body Count. Is that the name of the song or the band? I think the band. Let me look it up. I think he did a a song with... um, They're that band out of Texas. Or is it California? Oh, the... Upon uh, a Burning Body. Yeah. They're fucking cool. Yeah, they're, uh, they're like a... Straight up Chicano Mexican yeah. like uh I didn't know Pierce the Veil was Hispanic. Did you know that they're a Hispanic group? Oh really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I d- it's cause, you know, whenever you're covered up in so much emo makeup, you kind of yeah. just assume they're white. But no, they're uh, most of them are Hispanic yeah. dudes. His band uh Ice T's band is count, uh body count. Because apparently they uh Pierce the Veil did like a single de Mayo show where they actually got like some of like the like um you know, the Mexican dress dancers out yeah. there. Bro. And, He's been, Body Count's been around since the 90s, mm-hmm. like 1990. I didn't know that. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, he was doing Body Count at, uh, uh, at the same time as he released, like, his Cop Killer album. Wow. He has a song on Body Count called Cop Killer. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I think it's just a metal cover of the same song. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, because I know he was always kind of, like, emerged in, like, the L.A. music scene. Mm-hmm. So he kind of, like... Did a little bit of metal and also rap, but his rap career is what really took off his career because yeah. at the time, gangster rap. I mean, a, a lot of people, even Ice Cube, credit him as being like the original gangster rap guy mm-hmm. because of that uh, Cop Killer album, or 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 was that the name of the album or just the song? But yeah, one of those, probably the song. Yeah, but yeah. he he was like the first to really put his music out there as being extremely like provocative and violent. Yeah. No. Yeah. The fucking. God, man, I wish I could go back in time and see all these bands and like their prime. Oh yeah, fucking uh, go back to the fucking nineteen seventies and see like the first like Bad Brains show. Mm-hmm. Just see how like those original like hardcore bands that like came out the woodwork to like really lay the foundation to like some of like those wilder bands mm-hmm. later on. Because I know, um. Some bands get more credibility than others. Like obviously, everyone credits like Bad Brains, but they only really put out like one album. Mm-hmm. And then I know um, Dead Kennedys was a huge fucking band for their time, yeah. you know. But again, they didn't really go that far either because uh, Jello Biafra is such a fucking like hell bent on political. Like I'm mm-hmm. like I don't give a shit about fame. Like I care about sending a message, kind of thing. But yeah. I'm like. Come on, dog. Like, people just want to hear music. Yeah. Sing a song. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. It's, it's like going back to like the first shows. Uh, my first show, uh, I almost didn't get to go because my mom was like, no, it's a school night. And I'm like, come on. Come on. <laughs> and all my friends were behind me like, come on. <laughs> but in English. <laughs> but, yeah. but it was um, it was Lamb of God uh, mm. for their sacrament tour. Uh, it was so good. And that was back when the ticket was like 20 bucks instead of like 80 bucks. Dude, tickets yeah. were so fuck. I remember going to my first warp tour. That mm-hmm. ticket was like 30 bucks yeah. and it's like six stages and mm-hmm. like I don't know how many fucking bands. I remember cuz that show uh I got to see a lot of fucking bands that I w- never thought I would see like all in one place, mm-hmm. you know? Like I saw a little bit of Dillinger Escape Plan. Oh, dude, you suck. Uh, Real Big Fish was there, <laughs> so that was fucking cool. Um, I like how like all like ska heads. Oh, what's the fucking? They, they all are like Real Big Fish fucking blows. It's what, like they're cool. All right, guys. <laughs> what's what's the band that uh, some forty one was there? Oh, nice. and we pulled up on them as they were playing Fat Lip. Yeah, we. Um, so the I, whole crowd was just like, yeah. yeah like I saw. Uh, uh, when I moved out to San Diego, we, uh, my buddy and I went to like a, like a beer, like, uh, like a beer festival thing. And the first one we went to was kind of shitty or no, it was fun. But like we had a beer there. It was made with jalapenos and it mm-hmm. fucking burnt our stomachs. The shit. Yeah. So we left that one and went to a different one. And as we got in there, fucking alien and farm was on the stage. Really? And they just finished uh smooth, uh, 
playing Smooth Criminal. God damn. And uh, that, that was the end of the show. We hear like, all right, guys, good night. And we're like, fuck, we should have come here first. <laughs> um, God damn. What was that one fucking guy from back in the that those early years that used to play like a lot of acoustic acoustic songs? Um, he's the one that it's the artist that wrote the song Fireflies. What's the name of that fucking guy? Oh, two million fireflies. That yeah, one? yeah. So what? I, don't I remember, fucking know. So we went uh, the first Warp Tour. We ended up going over to watch Emir play live, and they mm. were they had one of the bigger stages. Yeah. And dude, when they came out, I mean, the crowd blew the fuck up, and then it just like thirty mosh pits coming out of nowhere. Nice. It was fucking dope. However, anybody felt about him year back then, but they put on a damn good show. And I remember I was near this one guy that had this huge septum piercing, and he was just talking to this girl out of nowhere, like uh, talking to this girl next to him. And then out of nowhere, a fucking elbow just smacked him straight in the oh, nose, shit. and I just see his septum f- like hanging off a piece of meat that is his nose. Uh. And he was wearing like a plain white beanie, and he took took it off and put it. And then not even a couple of seconds later, the whole thing is drenched in blood. And then he, he, like, I just saw him, like, I guess, like, run to, like, where the bathrooms are at. Like, he just had that whole shit ripped out. And then what sucked was that show got, uh, that set got cut early because it started raining. Uh And whenever the rain happens, we all had to move into, like, the inner area that has the actual roof cover. Uh Because it was over there by, like, the... um, it's like one of the app, uh, Apple centers in Atlanta. What the fuck is it called? Uh, I think it used to be called the Bell South Amphitheater. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they changed it to something. Now it's like the T-Mobile Amphitheater yeah, or something. Or some so, shit like that. Yeah. I, I don't remember. I haven't been over there in a long time. But we went there. But what they had to do because the ring wouldn't let up is like, okay, what we're going to have to do is change up the tickets. So uh, we're going to... We're going to have different bands that were supposed to go on, uh, uh, change the lineup, you mm-hmm. know? So basically, some bands that day didn't get to perform, mm-hmm. uh, so only the bigger bands had to play in the center. So when we when, when they when it went to the center, I remember, you know, Sum 41 played, so everybody was like, oh, fuck yeah, yeah you know? Okay, After them, another metal band played. I don't remember what metal band it was. It might have been... I think the Devil's Wear Prada was there. Oh, nice. I'm not sure. I've seen them. I saw them when they released, or they did a, what did they do? It was the Roots Above, Branches Below album. Yeah. Yeah. That was such a good fucking show. They played that, that, and that was them with Kill Switch. Yeah. And, uh, um, God, what was it? There was a band in between, and, like, he sings... He apparently like covers for uh he was covering a lot for Howard during yeah. that tour because that's when his like health shit was happening. Mm-hmm. Um God, what the fuck's his name? I think it was a singer from All That Remains. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. He's bald too. He looked like a white version of Howard. And bro, fucking rock that shit, mate. I know uh what I was getting to is so after they had a bunch of different bands play on like yeah. the main center stage of that amphitheater, right? So after I guess the Devil Wears Prada, I don't know if they they played that show for for sure, but I'm they just I'm, do I'm, I'm just yeah I'm just taking I'm just taking a guess here. But after them, fucking Fireflies guy comes out. <laughs> they put him on the fucking stage, and dude, he came out. Yeah, he came out there like tight V neck T shirt. Oh, Was skin, it the deep V? Yeah, skin yeah. tight fucking like skinny jeans. He had, he was barefoot for some reason, and dude. After the first song, he was like, guys, I know everybody's here for different groups, but please, I'm just trying to get through my set. They would not stop throwing drinks at him. They were throwing beers at him, cups. Um, one guy was heckling him through the whole show in the front. <laughs> like, like every, uh, That's funny. I, why would they put that guy in Warp Tour? Because there was a lot of different bands were playing on Warped Tour. Okay. Because yeah. you got to think about it. You had like punk bands, ska bands, metal bands, yeah. and then you have indie bands too. Because mm-hmm. uh, I remember I saw like one indie group there that was actually not that half bad. Uh, um, and then I remember I saw one band there that was fucking god awful. Oh, I remember. The second Warped Tour I went to, I think I saw Parkway Drive. Parkway Drive was oh, fucking nice. there. And they fucking tore it up like that that show was fucking dope as fuck too but anyways 
the we're, only we're other still on topic, don't worry. Yeah, the only <laughs> other show I the only other show that I remember that was fucking amazing, and it's one that I went with. I went with you and John. We went to go to the the summer Sla- slaughter tour of 08. Yeah, and I remember the headlining band was. Um, the Black Dahlia Murder. Fuck yeah, dude. That was a good show. That was a damn good show. Hells yeah. Rest in peace, Trevor. Fuck, mm-hmm. It fucking sucks that he passed away. But, dude, that fucking show. When he got up on there, that's when you see the difference between, like, like a band that's trying to get their footing to, mm-hmm. like, a band that just knows how to yeah. fucking murder. Like, he walked up there. He knew the show was going to be fucking great. Yeah. Like, no I questions just, about it. I just wish I could have seen him at one of his iconic drunk shows because that's what he was uh, famous for. Oh, really? Because I know one of my old friends told me, he's like, dude, I saw Black Dahlia Murder like a couple of years after that, right? I think he saw them in like in 2010, 2011, mm-hmm. right? And he was like, dude, uh, the band had to keep reminding Trevor what song they were on because he was so <laughs> fucking drunk, he kept trying to play the same song. Like... <laughs> And then at one point they start the song after they already told him they're not playing the song he yeah. said. He's but he's singing the lyrics to the wrong song. So they had to stop and be like, dude. That's funny. <laughs> like like got it. Uh, the the we went to the one uh after that year, the two thousand nine one, uh Devil Driver headline. Mm. Uh, they put on a good fucking show. Weird it's I love going to metal shows and then meeting the singers afterwards. Yeah. Cause so we went down, like met them by like, they were like standing outside signing shit for people. Um, uh, one of my friends, she, uh, got a, I think a dollar bill signed by them. And I think she still has it. Mm. She just, yeah. Um, but like on stage, he's up there like, you know, fucking, you know, doing all that yeah. shit. <laughs> God, I'm out of practice. <laughs> but no, he's up there and just fucking crazy. He looks like ten feet tall. He's got fucking <laughs> leather everywhere. I used and to, lo- I used to love and, that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but fucking, we went down there. Was like, man, you put on a great show, bro. And I'm looking down at because he's so short. And they're like, yeah, man, good show. And he turns around, I was like, hey guys, thanks for coming out so much. Like, I uh, really appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> It's kind of like, dude, remember at Summer Slaughter when we, uh, one of the bands that played? At the time, they were just coming up, mm. but f- we, we saw Whitechapel live. Yeah, fucking Whitechapel, But bro. Phil Bozeman is so fucking tiny. <laughs> he is little as fuck. Yeah. He's so fucking, he, like, he he has to be, like, what, like, five foot two? Mm-hmm. He, He's small. It's kind of like in a case he is strained, too. Their bass player is super small while their guitar player used to be fucking jacked. Yeah. So his, like, the guitar would look too small, mm-hmm. and then the bass player's bass looked way <laughs> too big. Like, yeah. I think, like, all of them were big except for the bass player. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, um, knowing that uh, the Devil Driver show it was cool, too, because, um, like, two bands, I can't, play, I can't remember. I wish I remembered all the bands that played that show. It was a great show. But I do remember one band because the lead singer just stumbled on the stage drunk as fuck, <laughs> dude. It was uh, Napalm Death. And he could just go. Oh, you saw Napalm Death? Yeah, dude. He dude. just he stumbled on the stage holding the mic. Yeah, we're going to love it. You could not understand what the fuck he's God, if anyone's ever listened to Napalm Death, <laughs> I'll give you a quick sample of what they sound like. They sound like this. Yeah. Like, it, it, they, they. Bro, <laughs> no, the show, what's fucking amazing, he didn't, he was like trying to sing. He was drunk off his ass, had a fresh tattoo on his stomach. <laughs> like, it was still red. Like, he just fucking got it. Yeah. And he was singing, and then finally, like, midway through, like, the first song, he just fucking gave up jumped into the crowd and just started fucking crowd killing everyone dude. <laughs> <laughs> and the band was like fuck it and they played just the instrumental of all their whole fucking set dude <laughs> oh dude i fucking love when bands uh, used to do that shit i remember one time i went to this one show uh it was i don't know it was like in the bum fuck middle of nowhere i yeah. think it was going towards atlanta but it wasn't exactly atlanta it was a reasonably sized uh, venue and it was all in a most of the bands that were playing there were semi like Christian metal bands, but not yeah. all of them were metal bands. Because I know one of them that played there was like this band that literally their whole gimmick was that they played like eighties like hair rock music, and they have like a crazy light show as oh, they do it. Are you talking about a uh, uh, like Steel Panther? Steel Panther, dude! I fucking love those guys. I saw them live uh, in uh, in no, San no, no. Diego. I don't think it was no. I think this no. This band was called something different. I think they were called like Neon Wolf or something, uh, okay, different. Maybe something different. Yeah, yeah, they were completely different. But Bro, but this fucking Steel Panther. No, I saw them in Houston. 
they play they opened up for um uh fucking uh what's that band with the guy with the lead singer from Slipknot uh Stone Sour Stone Sour yeah yeah they opened up for him and then it was weird because in between like mm. they did the opening and then there was a Suicide Girls burlesque show. Yeah, and then fucking uh, what's his face from Slipknot he came yeah. out. He was wearing like a mini skirt with like thigh highs and heels, and he had fake poops on. And he was like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Suicide Girls. Yeah. I remember that when guys yeah. were super into that shit. It's still around. Yeah, yeah, but they're not like as popular as they yeah. were back in like the height of like the emo era, right? Yeah. But fucking, st- I have not listened to the Stone Sour for fucking. Yeah. I remember being a depressed teenager listening to the. Like, I'm looking at you through the glass. Don't know how much time has passed. Oh no, that it feels like forever. But nothing has ever been. <laughs> yeah. Don't get us wrong. The song's good. Yeah, the song's good. But it's just like. Uh, so many fucking like cringy fucking emo kids. Yeah, just yeah. sitting in the shadows. Dude, have you seen videos of Corey Taylor's son? That's he, his name. Yeah, Corey Taylor's son yeah. fucking rips. Oh really? Yeah, dude, he sounds just like his dad. That's like cool. Yeah, exactly the same fucking voice, which is cool to think that there's still gonna be an artist out mm-hmm. there carrying that legacy, which yeah. I which I think was pretty dope, because um, not a lot of. Not a lot of famous people's like kids end up doing just as good as like their or, parents. What is it? A uh, Foo Fighters son? Uh, what's his face? Dave Grohl's son. He's apparently yeah. like just like him. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> uh, what's his name? Billy Joe from Green Day. Mm-hmm. Like during COVID, him and his kids. Uh, his he has two sons. Uh, they were just doing cover songs in their basement. <laughs> I, yeah. I remember somebody had uh, shared a photo and they had, it was a photo that they edited of David Grohl <laughs> next to it. the yeah. younger version of him. <laughs> and he's like, David Grohl hanging out with the drummer from Nirvana. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think he reposted it too. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, it was, oh God. I haven't been to a show in forever, dude. Yeah. I'm going to one this weekend, though. Uh, just some local shit um, for the people who are local. Uh, Black Strap uh, uh, Rock, I think it's called. Yeah. Let's see. Let's look it up. I pulled it up just so I could say it. Uh, Black, Stat, Bra- Black Strap Rock Hall. Uh, so they have a show tomorrow. It's uh, some local metal bands from around the area. Okay. So it's going to be good. Yeah. Going to go in there and fuck some kids up. I'm going to wear my shit kickers. I know. Everything. I remember... Um, Shit kickers. <laughs> yeah, I got my boots. Yeah, I got my dogs with red red laces ready to stomp out some Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, dude. No, they're yellow strings. I always thought that was funny um, that a lot of people didn't know that's what that meant. Yeah, and people would fucking wear them. You're like, yo, bro. <laughs> I remember one time I was on the Doc Martin website because mm-hmm. I was trying to, like, because uh, they have some really nice fucking, like, dress shoes and shit. Yeah. And I was like, I want some uh, fucking Doc Martin dress shoes. I want those old man slippers. But then I was that. also noticed that they had, like, a big selection of different, like, custom, like, laced, laces designs, yeah. right? And I was like, babe, what kind of color should I get for, like, my dogs? And she was like, I mean, you should get something like bright, like like a yellow or like a red. I was like, babe, they don't sell red laces. And she's like, why not? <laughs> I was like, do I have to explain like basic history to you? Like, <laughs> re- but yeah, it's associated with neo Nazis. Yeah, um, yellow laces are actually apparently um, uh, good. Yeah, yeah, like they're like uh, for inclusion and shit like that. I think. Well, the thing is, I know a lot of people got mad that neo-Nazis took the name skinheads because the oh, original yeah. skinheads had nothing to do with the, ne- they're actually like working, like the original was, skinheads were working class. Like they were all about equality. Yeah. They were yeah. equal, equal quality and rights for the working class. Yeah. Because they were like, we're all eating the same shit sandwich. Yeah. And most of them didn't go to like metal shows. They went to reggae shows, mm-hmm. reggae uh, and uh, post-punk shows. Yeah. Cause the ska was uh, getting big and that's yeah. where they would be. But, um, bro, to go back in time to start like to go to those shows, like those mm-hmm. fucking like fucking warehouse basement shows that they would throw and then the cops come trying to break it up. You got to run out of there and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. But um, kids today are too soft. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Some kids are still like, they still got that love of like sense of danger in them. I think it just really depends where you grow up. Yeah. I I'm, feel like smaller 
towns that have scenes do more of that kind of stuff yeah. than other places. Yeah, because uh, usually they're like far away from like bigger venues that actually get good bands. Well, you got to think about like I always thought about this. I was like, why was it that I was surrounded by so many like local venues up here, like where we grew, where I grew up, mm-hmm. and I realized it's because there's nothing to fucking do up here. Yeah. Like, so you have to make your own entertainment, so you put on shows. But I know some of them were traps. Some mm. of them were traps because they were being put on by fucking, amb- like, not evangelical churches, but oh, just, like, churches. Like when we went to go see A Plea for Purging? Yeah. Yeah. That show was dope, though. That was. That was a dope-ass show. But I I always, I, I got so upset when they broke up because I was like, I actually like this band a lot. Yeah, yes, they were cool. Yes, they have religious material and shit, but they were a good fucking band. Yeah. But I did love the name of their final tour. What was it? It was called the uh, "Grow Up and Get a Job" tour, <laughs> ah, because that's, that's, that's what the, because that's what they said. It's like, guys, we've been on tour for a long time. We've like loved touring and all this, but like, this isn't sustainable. Yeah, like we have families, we have like families to take care of. We have mm-hmm. to like like cut it like early. Like plus, like they 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 were like, we're getting older. We don't know how much longer we can tour like this. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, uh, you see it a lot now, like on TikTok, uh, bands, like small bands that go on tours, uh, like even local, like state tours, they just travel around the state and go into venues. Yeah. Um, they're, they're on TikTok being like, Hey, you know, we, we, at the show, we made enough to make it to the next show. Uh, if anyone in the next town has a, a place we can crash, uh, for free. Um, you know, hit us up and, you know, we'll repay you with like band merch or whatever. I remember, dude, one, one of the shows that we uh, went to, right. Uh, we got the, the main band that we went to go see was we went to go see main lean and the sons of disaster. Oh, you fucking suck, dude. That band was fucking dope. You know why? Yeah. Because when they played like, uh, I think when they played tough as John Jacobs, mm-hmm. they actually got off the stage and they had a circle pit around them while they performed. Cause oh, they had nice. wire, they had like wireless, like guitar yeah. and shit like that. The only Bro, one that was still on stage was the drummer. I remember when wireless stuff started and, coming out and <laughs> everyone was all about that shit. Dude. And this was the most country ass shit ever. The main singer, cause you know, he used to be part of under oath, right? Yeah. He, he, as he went down there, they brought down the box he stood on, and he also was down there with a four by four, and he kept slamming it on the fucking box, <laughs> like it was like the weirdest fucking thing ever. Like he was just like, you know, like he was pointing like, it at people. Yeah, he was shit. getting yeah. real fucking into it, but it was a dope ass fucking show. But one of the other yeah. bands that we saw there, they were like a band that was up and coming, and we remember we were following them closely because like, oh, this band is cool. They're signed by Metal Blade Records and mm. shit. They're like. Uh, they're going to be at this show. We met them and they were there. We actually had a full conversation with the full band. And they're like, guys, if you guys want to like be a band and like tour and stuff, yeah. just know that there's not a lot of money in metal. Like we're just scraping by. Yeah. He's like, yes, we're signed to Metal Blade, but we don't even get to see like the numbers of our record sales. They don't mm. release them. They just. Like, they haven't helped us at all with any money for tours. They haven't sent us Damn. any money for, like, revenue. And then they take a cut of all our merch that we, that's on, that, that's online. What band was that? Uh, I don't remember. It's been so long, but I remember this band was really fucking good. Like, really fucking good. And the, the truth be told, I think after that, they put out, like, one more album <sighs> under Metal Blade. And yeah. then they were let go. And then they just disappeared because I think more than likely they were just like, we're not making any fucking money off of this. Yeah. I remember growing up in the area that I did, there was one local band that we used to fucking love. And anybody who grew up in like the area that I'm from that knew this band was like, yeah, that band was the shit. There was a band that went by uh, Thaddeus and they were fucking cool as shit. Was it Thaddeus? They're called, they went by Thaddeus, but I think. Everyone called them Thaddeus. Yeah. Yeah. Technically, it's pronounced the Thaddeus. That's what they claimed. Yeah. But I remember their their cry, crowning jewel song was a song called Gator, and people used to always yell it out, and mm. they used to get super mad later on about it because that that it was a bad song. It wasn't that good. <laughs> and, would just be like Gator. <laughs> yeah, and and then the 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 uh, the lyrics didn't make any fucking sense mm. and stuff. So you know, people used to always tease them about that and stuff. But one of their band members after that band had broke up made it into like a legitimate band and they went on tour. Nice. And I remember after that first tour, we were at a Walmart and he was there stocking shelves. Mm -hmm. 
because when the tour was over, they just went right back home. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's like the harsh reality of some of these bands is that like they'll make a little bit of money on mm-hmm. tour through merch sales and stuff, but they're probably not making that much. Yeah. They're just making enough to get by. Like all these bigger bands out there that mm. have like all the backing and everything, like Lamb of God. Like I know you don't like them as much anymore because their stuff kind of got stagnant. Yeah. Um, I really haven't listened to their stuff much either, but that's, you know, that's... um. Well, let's get one thing I, straight. I guess, I guess if you were looking at it, like if you were looking at a bar, they're they're set at top shelf now. Yeah. But, so well, let me get, get one thing. That shit. Let me get one thing straight. I loved that band. No, oh, yeah. I just I just saw them progressively get older, and I just didn't see anything like new from them. And yeah. for me, uh, with my attention span, like I want to see like a band evolve mm-hmm. into something like over time, and I just felt like. You know, they just kind of stuck to that, like, run-of-the-mill kind of groove metal style. And mm-hmm. that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's still decent, yeah. good music. But after a while, you're kind of like, guys, you kind of are just using the same, like, yeah. it's kind of like ACDC. You're using the same four notes, dog. Come on. Like, I mean, like, to me, it's like, yeah, they're using the same notes. But, I mean, you can still throw bows to it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, um, like music now, like, this new stuff coming out. I'm saying new because it came out, like, a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. But uh, like you're talking about, like AD, your ADHD doesn't let you like kind of like you kind of fell off a land off because of that kind of like you're just like you're yeah. not doing anything new. So it's I think that's why I got really into uh, like other genres. Yeah, like uh, fucking bands like uh, what's that one? Uh, Polyphia. Oh, Periphery. No, Polyphia. Polyphia? Periphery is fucking cool too. I saw them live in Houston, bro. Yeah. Say, like. That, Talk that, about a good fucking show. This guy, when he sings, it's studio quality singing, dude. He's mm-hmm. fucking saying his fucking heart out. He's amazing. And I also saw this one band called Chon. It mm. was like they were kind of heavy, but they're more like a mellow, like a mellow melodic, like gent. Yeah. Uh fucking like stoner music, bro. <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> um what was it? No, Polyphia, they had that one song called um uh if you heard it, you know it, but like these kids nowadays, when they're like just like doing all that shit with the fucking fret and like they do pops and they're, they're noodling. Yeah. But it's like thinking back from when I was a kid, if I heard that when I was a fucking kid, I'd be like, wizard. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Dude? And like that's just drawing. Every single time I pull up the video, no matter how times I, many times I see it, I still watch it because it's just like there's so much happening, it keeps you on it. Yeah, but then again, sometimes bands, they just know what people like. Yeah. And simplicity can take you a long way. A good yeah. example would be when System of a Down dropped Protect the Land. Mm-hmm. That is like four fucking chords, and that mm-hmm. song fucking is great. Yeah, it's Protect the Land, and then the other one is... Um, uh, a Homicidal Maniacs or yeah. something like that. That one's good. I love those two songs because uh, Homicidal... Homicidal, uh, something I forgot what it was called, but the first one, the the we protect the land, that's new system of a down, like mm-hmm. that's their like last two albums, mesmerize, hypnotize, mm-hmm. and then the other song, that's old school fucking system. I fucking love that song. Yeah, just that, just the beginning, the I was like, oh shit, yeah, oh god, because I think I. I probably listen to all their albums mm-hmm. for re on repeat for like all Bro, of like middle school, school, high school still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still listen to them. And I, I want to say that my, f- I, I, I still will say my favorite album is toxicity. I think yeah. that's the one I've listened to the most, but the thing is still, this album was really fucking good. Yeah. Uh, Hypnotize was good. Mesmerize was really good. Um, I just feel like, uh, because I think, um, everyone, only Darren wanted to keep going. Uh, he kind of, he, they all said like, yeah, Darren kind of pushed us all to do uh, hypnotize. Yeah. Because they weren't really feeling it. Hmm. Yeah. They like, after Mesmer, or was it, Mem- Mesmerize was the first one, and well, then Hypnotize was the last one. Well, right? that's the thing. Mesmerize and Hypnotize dropped at the same time. It was a double album. Yeah, but they didn't want to do the second one. Yeah. Like, they were just like, we they didn't s- want to. Yeah, they split it into two different albums yeah. for that reason. They didn't drop at the same time. Yes, they did. They did? Yes. I know. Okay. Trust me. I know. All right. All right. Cool. Because I was always confused on why do they have the same year? And then mm. I looked at an interview. He's like, why did y'all drop two albums at the same time? And then 
I don't know if you ever used to watch System of Down interviews, but they're hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Darian, Darren. Just was, doing like the weird shit. Yeah, yeah. Darren's like wearing sunglasses and he's like, I got a vision from Superman. Yeah. And he told me to drop a double album. Yeah. And, and then, I think that's what kind of forced them all to kind of be like, we need to take a fucking break. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, from from Toxicity, my favorite song is uh, Question. Mm-hmm. Just that the 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 acoustic guitar and everything going on, then it gets to the heavy parts and everything, and then from mesmerize. I'm trying to remember what song on there was good on hypnotize. I know it's a uh, it's a uh, holy mountain. Mm. God, that song's good. I just love the fucking title track, dog. I used to listen to that so much. Like hey, Y-O-B. like why don't you ask the oh, uh, kids yeah. at Tiananmen Square? <laughs> Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square. <laughs> But the fashion, um, the reason yeah. why they were there. God. It's just so, like, they I love System of Down. I, I think I fell in love with System of Down because. How different they were. It was how different they were. And also, if you listen to the songs, they were, like, some of them, yeah, they were all over the place. But then some of them were just super simple. Yeah. Like, four fucking chords, little progression, and, and also boom, fucking hit. Darren was just really creative with the way he came because yeah. he thought different in his music style, and that's why he was considered one of the best guitarists of uh, of like the new metal era. Yeah, because it's just how different he was. Because I mean, like, they listen, hated that they were categorized like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. listen to their song "People," where mm-hmm. all he's doing is hovering his fingers over the the strings, and he's like, and then he's and then he just hits into strong bars. Yeah. And that that creativeness of just being different was fucking yeah. cool. But the the thing about new metal was new metal was really awesome for a time, but it fell off quickly. Yeah, and it fell off quickly because of other bands like Corn. I can understand the appeal of Corn. They had some good songs. I feel, but the the it was like he ate a fucking hot pocket and it was still too fucking hot. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, yeah, like Corn had its moments yeah. of just being kind of like, like okay, like Freak on a Leash was fucking a weird song, but it was yeah. like it had its moments what in was the it? Sun. Marilyn Manson. Yeah, but then some other bands like they just did it better. Yeah, like fucking Limp Bizkit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't consider the. I guess you can kind of consider them. They're new metal. No, I no, I was gonna no. say a different band. I, th- I don't know if you consider them new metal, but I mean. But Tom Morello was in it. But Audio Slave, dude, Chris Cornell's yeah. vocals with like the creativeness that Tom Morello has mm-hmm. on that guitar it was fucking something different. But then again, besides System of the Down, the the new metal that I thought was like one of the reigning kings, even though they had a short like lifespan, was Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. You couldn't fucking compete with that because you know They're why? On tour again. They didn't give a fuck about being famous. They mm-hmm. were about sending them. They shut down Wall Street yeah. for a music video. These guys did not give a fuck. And then I heard one of the reasons they had a breakup was because they were getting in a little bit too much trouble because mm-hmm. they were trying to like charge them with like inciting riots and shit. Yeah. And obviously. You can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> That's not good, but yeah. it's cool. What it's cool it? that a band shut down Wall Street and cost them money. Yeah. Fucking swashbuckle. Swashbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, no, let's go down that fucking lane of uh, music. I've always wanted to go to like those fucking, it was like late, uh, late 2010 or early 2010s. Mm-hmm. All these like, metal bands started coming out like uh and they were like pirate metal viking metal uh fucking like medieval metal and all yes. this shit it's like i mean then, amar uh, amar uh amar and marth amar and marth they're fuck they fucking ripped yeah no but there's other ones that it was like literally like i think the biggest offender of uh of the john where i was just like okay this is where i draw the line was oakley doakley Oakley Doakley. Fuck yeah. Oakley Doakley. I'd the ne- Ned Flanders band. Every ba- <laughs> member in the band is dressed as Ned Flanders, yeah. and it's Ned Flanders metal. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Right. No. But some bands lean, let, lean into the craziness, do a great job. Like, Guar. Uh, huh? Guar. Guar was amazing. Yeah. What's that other band? The band where the main vocalist is a guy dressed as a goblin? 
Oh, Necro Goblin. Necro Goblin. Yeah. yeah. Dude, there's... No, Necro Goblicon. That's what it's yeah. called. Is it? Yeah, it's called okay. Necro Goblin. The music videos are funny as shit. Yeah, because it's like him like trying to like yeah. flirt with a, a girl, and he's like has a shit nine-to-five job. Yeah. It's it's the dumbest fucking shit. But and there's another song they call... I think the song is called uh, uh, A Gimmick or something like that. Yeah. Because they're like... The music video is them trying to figure out like, we need a gimmick to get us out there more. So they're going through like every genre. They do, they dress up like pop stars. They do like black metal. They uh like uh a hardcore scene. So he has like the fucking hair and yeah. shit. Speaking of hardcore, uh fucking crabcore, bro. Crabcore? Yeah. It's all the bands like Attack Attack and all them that like whenever they would do their chugs, yeah. They just like go splay like dun, 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 dun. Oh, trust me, I know. I've done a lot of that. Yeah, no, yeah. Because when I was in a metal band, that was like the the thing was I didn't even think that was all that cool, but the thing is like It gets the crowd moving. The crowd yeah. fucking loved that shit. I and remember that, uh, we would do the running in place thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like looking back, I'm like, God, I was fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I remember um my band members used to always give me so much flack because I didn't move a lot on stage. I yeah. used to stay in like my one spot, and because the thing was, you get winded doing these yeah. metal uh, vocals, and I was fucking chain smoking cigarettes all the time, so it wasn't exactly the best thing. <laughs> and but I the, had asthma. <laughs> but the thing, the thing that was, the the thing that was fucking cool was that. At one point in time, like my voice was so conditioned to do vocals. Now yeah. I couldn't even fucking imagine doing that shit again because I could just jump into a recording mm. and do that for like hours on end and then barely have that much of yeah. like issues later on. I would love to uh, just do it again just for funsies. It would be fun yeah. to try to get back into it, but, but the, I want to learn all the new techniques that people have been coming up with. Though. Yeah, because I think I was using most of like just my. Just, th- ah, I was just using my. Th- ah, yeah. Well, I near the end, I got really good of learning the actual technique of like doing it through your like yeah, flexing your you diaphragm, learned, like the vocal fry and everything. Yeah, yeah. But the, yeah. but I was so adjusted to the old way of doing it. I, uh, it's hard for me to learn it back like learn it learn that technique again yeah. every now and then while i'm driving to work i'll uh i'll just be listening to some metal songs like let me try again and i'll be <laughs> like i'll be in the car like at first i'll be i'll do the first like ah! <laughs> like right now i caught yeah so I'm like okay that wasn't right and then like after like one more or two more tries i'll kind of get the feel of it again but then when i get to work i'm like <coughs> hey guys <laughs> yeah i remember i used to have to warm up my voice when i when i did it mm-hmm. and uh because if i didn't yeah you would like just hurt your fucking throat yeah. like really bad i remember you know what the old technique was oh you do the uh, have huh? you seen that one no no yeah. no there's an old school technique uh drink uh drink room temperature hawaiian punch uh because it would lube up your throat mm. with that stickiness, and it kind of may give you a little bit of phlegm. Uh, so okay. whenever you would do the vocals, your vo- your throat wouldn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Like that was like an old like. Obviously, I stopped doing that immediately because I was like, I'm f- so sick of drinking Hawaiian punch. Just this throw is f- up. He's throwing up blood. That's so metal. No, it's Hawaiian punch. <laughs> <laughs> But we used to have a lot of techniques. I remember um, before I became a vocalist, one of my other, one of the other members who became our bass player, he used to be the vocalist, yeah. right? He used to um, carry around a jar of honey, and he would like eat honey to yeah. lube up his throat. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, it, it just just doesn't help. Yeah, we would um, to warm up whenever we were practicing. We would do this one song we came up with. Um, uh, the of course it's like. Going back to like the 2000s, it's the song. It has a really long name. It was called like Wiley Coyote Finally Caught the Roadrunner. Yeah. Because that's what I fucking say in the song. Mm-hmm. And what you, I do is I just scream it as hard as I can. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, oh my God. But I'm screaming it. I finally caught you. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, and the band's <laughs> just like, uh, like the drummer to warm up, he's just going <laughs> fucking blasting the shit. The guitar is just like it sounds like a like very early uh uh what's it called dance Gavin dance yeah I yeah. I know for a fact that like some of the ideas that we had 
as far as writing music mm-hmm. in those early days, all of them were god awful. Like, yeah. they were terrible ideas. Because what did we know about the world? We didn't know yeah. anything. I remember the dumbest song that my band had ever wrote. We had a song called "Babies Are Like Baked Goods," <laughs> and the song was comparing abortions to taking bread out of the oven too early. Oh, fun! Yeah, that our 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 best song that we had, but um, the lyrics didn't make any sense. Was a uh, it was called Conrad the Great. Huh. Yeah, it was just talking about a barbarian named Conrad who pillages villages. Okay. Yeah. And it was a great song. Hmm. Yeah. But I remember back in the early days of like playing music with like a lot of local bands. Mm-hmm. The thing that used to irritate me the most was sometimes you would run into that one band that was like, Oh, you're not in to like trying to write good music you just trying to look cool yeah because they came like dressed to the nines and their mm-hmm. music did not like really add up to what they were trying to be because yeah. a lot of times like we used to always have these moments of like oh fuck we're performing with this band dog like yeah. i'm fucking nervous like because we we go on their myspace page and they have like a badass backdrop professional photos they're all dressed really well we're like fuck quote unquote studio quality music yeah yeah and then we're just like, oh, God. And then we played a show with them. We're like, dude, that band was god-awful. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? And then I remember one time, it was the opposite. We we were playing with this one band. Mm-hmm. We had never heard of them. We went on their MySpace page. They, didn't have, they barely had a bio. They didn't have any like sample music. We're like, dude, this band is like really bare bones. Mm-hmm. Like, we can't find any information. Like, I was like, hopefully they're good, they I guess. Rip. Oh my god, dude! They yeah. fucking like they 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 made us reconsider even fucking doing music. <laughs> we were just like, dude, what the fuck? Like they like yeah. And what was what really like upset us was the fact that like they went on before us. Oh fuck! I hate that shit dude. because did that once be- too. because they were they were newer, so nobody knew what they sounded like. But we had been around a little bit. We had already played a couple of shows, so we yeah. went on after them. But let me tell you, no band was able to recover mm-hmm. after they put on it at show. We fucking took a shit on stage, and then the band after us took a shit on stage. And I think the headlining band that night did decent because yeah. everyone was there, like ready for them to play. Uh, I think it was the Deus, but I don't remember. But Gator, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like, God damn it, still. <laughs> no, I remember one time we played a show in like this. Um, there was one band in the town that we lived in. They were really good. And they came and uh, uh, they put on a fucking good show. Like they were like the second band to play, and we were right after them. Yeah, I went on stage. I was like, "All right, guys, we're I f- what the fuck was our band name at the time? I can't remember. It was something long. Yeah, uh, we're this band, and we're gonna try. And we just started playing, <laughs> and we did all right. Yeah, I remember though the um, the one show that I remember very vividly because how awkward it was Mm -hmm. we were the first band to play a new venue that had opened up that was another church fucking venue right of course but we had explicit material so we had to like like rewrite our lyrics so we could even perform there basically what i did is whenever i came up to a point of something i couldn't say i just didn't say anything i'd just make a fucking growl you know And um, so one song was just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, essentially, that's what I had to do. Yeah. But we went on stage, and like, I guess because the venue was brand fucking new, yeah. everybody that was there were just kind of like awkward. Mm-hmm. And literally through our like five song set, like not a single person like moved or clapped or cheered us on. Nothing. We were just like, all right, well, thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah. And then how we literally were like, what the fuck happened? Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just the fucking vibe of this venue. And, and uh, it definitely was the vibe of the venue because, like, nobody really got into it into, like, the final last two bands that came up because I guess people finally, like, yeah, loosened yeah, up yeah. a little bit. Because the band that went on after us, at one, po- at one point, the, the song – slows down Mm -hmm. the guy switches his electric for an acoustic and Uh, a guy came up there in juggalo makeup and did slam poetry are you serious yes (laughs) oh my god speaking of juggalos didn't uh uh, what's his face fred durst get like attacked by one of the fucking guys from icp a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, like he came on stage to try to find him. Thread is just like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, ICP beefed with a lot of people. They beefed with like Eminem too. Why? Because they're both from Detroit. 
and yeah, so they used to like they used to like talk shit on like Eminem for not being like a true like Detroit native, even though he was from Detroit. Yeah, like They're, what the fuck do you want him to do? <laughs> basically, what happened was I think they were trying to get on one of his tours, and he was just like, no, no. yeah. And they were just like, "Way to turn your back on fucking Detroit natives and shit." And then they started like, you know, making songs about like, you know, fuck Eminem and all this and that. And oh Eminem took, you know, whenever you call out Eminem, he, he, it's not that he takes it personal, but he's like, "I'm gonna light you up. Yeah. Like, I'm about to rap. Yeah, I'm about to teach you a fucking lesson." Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Sit down when adults are talking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we're gonna get beef with ICP now because we talked about them. Uh. We should but get him on the show one What's day. the weirdest fucking thing you've ever seen happen at a local show? Uh, the weirdest thing I've seen? Huh, what was it? Um, someone was really high, and they were in the pit, and they just fell on the ground and started, like, just like, uh, just that. What? Just They were just like, uh. <laughs> they, were, they were fucking rolling hard. This is one story I always And it was like, a metal show. Like, why do you... No, why would you take like X and go to a metal show? <laughs> I, it's just fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, like that, that's a really weird place. To, it's kind of like yeah. why would you trip acid and then go watch like a death metal band? You're gonna yeah. be like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like that's the worst trip. Uh, take like take some acid or something and then go watch Guar. <laughs> <laughs> He's like up there, like oh, we're from space. I believe you. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I remember. Um, so this is one story I always loved bringing up because how fucking wild it was because like, so we used to have this one guy that we went to high school with that he was a little, like he had a few screws loose, you yeah. know, he was a smart kid, but he was just like socially like not there. Yeah. Right. And one time we had invited him to one of our shows. He was like, dude, how funny would it be just to bring him along? Cause he's such a goofy dude. Right. So we brought him along. It was whatever. Like yeah. he did what, like, like he was there, we just th- he did some goofy shit. We were just like, "That's funny, whatever." Yeah. And then after that, we we're just like, "Whatever." But then, like a month later, we had another show lined up. We didn't talk to him about it at all. We're like, "That was just a one and done. We're not gonna ever do this again." And we're like, "Okay, so this is w- this is the game plan, guys. We're gonna go meet up at this grocery store. We're gonna drop off our cars yeah. there, and then we're gonna jump like uh, hop all in the van, and then we're gonna head straight over to the venue. The venue was like in Kennesaw, I think." Mm-hmm. So it was about like what, like an hour away from us. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we pull up to this Kroger. He was there, waiting. We're like, dude, what are you doing here? And he was just like, I'm here for the show. What? He's like, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna ride along with y'all to the show. He's like, dude, we never, like, all of us were like, who the fuck told him about the show? Yeah. He's like, how did he know we were meeting here? Like, we, uh, and then we were super, like, uh, we we're, uh, we asked him, we we're like. Dude, how long have you been waiting here? He's like, oh, I've been here since like five in the morning. What? Five in the morning. He lifts up his shirt. He has your face. It's like tattooed on his stomach. We were meeting up at noon because our yeah. show was at like five. <laughs> we're like, because we we're going to get there early, yeah. unload our car, just hang out, watch a few bands. And then we go up on like five or six, whatever. Yeah. And then the show ends around like nine or 10, you know, because it's, you know, multiple bands playing. Yeah, each, yeah, yeah. Like each set is like what, 30 to 45, maybe an hour, depending. Um, depending on how long your set list is, you know, yeah. I think on average they used to give each band about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, I think. Yeah. And headline gets about like 45 to an hour. Yeah. yeah. So whatever. We were just like, <laughs> uh, okay. We didn't know what to do. So we took him with us. <laughs> and then the whole time there, we, he just was on some other shit, dog. And then, like, he was telling us stuff that we're like, I don't feel comfortable anymore around this individual. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, I just needed to get some air. I mean, I've been I've been getting into it with my girlfriend lately. And I was like, what happened? He was like, well, I don't know. She was just being a bitch the other day. I was like, what happened, dude? He was like, well, it's because, like, one of my buddies was telling me, like, how he wanted to hook up with my girlfriend. So I told him, he was like, hey, you should, like, go fuck him. And then she was like, I don't want to do that. And he, she was just like, why are you being a bitch about it? Just go fuck my friend. And then we were all like, <laughs> and we're all looking at him like, like, have you ever seen a guy that, like, represents, like, 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 so socially awkward nerd yeah. that's too smart for his own 
like good academically, mm-hmm. but socially he is just like a nightmare to deal with. That's yeah. exactly like I, I he must have been on the spectrum some way, shape, or form. But that's besides the point. Yeah. But by the time that we got to the venue, we're setting up, right? And we're playing our set. We're probably like we're like in the middle of our second song, mm-hmm. you know, about 10 minutes into like our fucking set, right? Yeah. He jumps on stage shirtless, just whipping his shirt around, and then he dives into a crowd of no people. Like, there's a crowd. But they But he dived into nobody. <laughs> and then he lands on the ground. And then instead of getting up, he starts wiggling on the floor like a snake. And we're like, what the <laughs> fuck is he doing? And then what was funny is we had somebody manning a table because we used um, yeah. we, we used to sell tank tops that had our like our band mm-hmm. name on it, right? We just went to a random like bullshit like website. We invested like a hundred bucks in a bunch of like tacky yeah, yeah. fucking like t shirts to sell. You know, we're like, this should give us enough like money to like Yes. Uh, the, the the pay for gas and Waffle yeah. House, you know? And uh, that's all we ever wanted. Yeah. We just wanted enough money for gas and Waffle House. Bro. And then the he wiggled all the way to the merch table. And then the person managed the... Uh, we were, I'm watching this as I'm performing. <laughs> and I see like, the, the, the person at the merch off? table gets up and kicks him off the floor. Like He's like, get the fuck up. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? And then he got up and then... Uh, after the show, we're there talking. Yeah. And um, w- uh, one of our friends, like uh, this girl that c- that came up with us, uh, or came up to see us, right? Mm-hmm. She was just like fucking like talking to us as she was sitting down. He comes out of nowhere and then just jumps in her lap. And we're like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude right now? And then we went to a gas station and he tried to like take a, a 12 pack of Mountain Dew like out of the stores like dude no we're not what are you doing like shut like stop like he just just becoming a fucking menace yeah and then I would have fucking left his ass honestly we were really fucking close but we yeah. were at the point of like oh god like we we were I'm gonna feel terrible if we end up having to like light him up or something yeah. but it eventually the day ended with us dropping him off at his house and then we were like we need to be super careful about any information about like what we're doing. I don't know how the fuck he found out we were here. Like we were going to meet up here. Cause it was just a dis like, like we, I, I think we literally came up with where we were going to meet up the day before. And yeah. he somehow found out. He probably just hanging out around y'all somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. That's the thing. No, <laughs> dude, I remember, uh, uh, one of the shows I went to, I think it was the Devil Driver show. Um, I bumped into like some of my classmates there, and uh, one of the guys he brought his younger sister who was like two grades under us, and she was like, of course she was like, uh, she's a fucking poser, like she was wearing like all the emo garb of like mm-hmm. she had like the the skunk hair you know going <laughs> on, the heavy eyeliner, the pink yeah, yeah, in the yeah. hair, all, the whole getup, mm-hmm. the 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 glove, the fingerless gloves. Oh God. Yeah, the three belts. Yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, this is so fun. I never got, I want to, I've always wanted to do a, a crowd surf. And we're like, do you want to do a crowd surf? Yeah. So we, him and me, we grab her legs and we like, hey, she wants to surf. And the guy's like, all right. We throw her up. The first couple of rows of guys were like, yeah, cool. And then I guess like the pit opened up. And they threw her, and she <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> she hit her head, <laughs> and we pull her back out. She's like, "I need to go sit down." <laughs> she didn't come back. <laughs> I think he, he and my buddy had to leave because he had to take her home. Dude, that whole like it's it's crazy to think like honestly thinking back. I remember like yeah. the girl like the way that girls used to like dress back in like those days for like that um for that whole scene. Like some of them did it tastefully mm-hmm. and it looked good, you know, like they were like, okay, yeah. you're still attractive. Like, yeah, you're doing the side hair and a little bit of like eyeliner makeup. Yeah, but you're not overdoing. Yeah. It. You're just doing yeah. the tight jeans, the vans and then the band t-shirt. And I'm yeah. like, okay. And like a little bit of like fucking, you know, like shit they picked up at Spencer's, whatever. Yeah. Like, I don't give a hot shit topic. about that. Yeah. Hot topic. Yeah. yeah. That kind of shit. And then, um, 
But some, some, some of them. Oh my yeah. god, they went to a different fucking level. The amount of makeup that they had on their bodies, mm-hmm. it was it was caked on, and then they had like the fake hair put into, but you could see where it ends. Yeah, yeah, it was fucking ridiculous. That reminds me, I meant to bring this up earlier. Mm-hmm. What's the what's the uh, what's the memory that you have of uh, like the first memory you have of you ever getting injured at a show? I got kicked in the face. <laughs> yeah, I went to a. It was um. God, who was it? I forgot what show it was, too. I forget. I've gotten hit in the head a lot at shows. Yeah. Um, but no, like this, like we were in the pit and we were like fucking moshing and shit. We're like, yeah, fuck yeah. But we're the pit was like right at the stage. So like whenever you like run by the stage, you're on the gate, like pushing yourself back to the pit and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was fun as shit. And then there was people like, of course, jumping into the pit and everything off the stage. And I guess I came around and I was like, you're the stage. I ran. I was like, Haha, I'm having so much fun. And I just see a boot just boom. It fucked up. Like I had like scratches all over my face. It broke my glasses. Mm-hmm. And I was the one who drove us to the fucking venue. <laughs> it was uh, it was the old masquerade. Oh, damn. And so the old we, sawmill. So what we did for for a second, because we had to get to a gas station. And at the time, you don't stop anywhere in Atlanta after a show. Yeah. You get out of Atlanta first, and then you stop at a gas station. So what we had to do was, um, because um, I think everyone else had drank a little bit. So we were like, yeah, we can't drive. Or I'm the only one I could drive. Um, <laughs> we held up my phone. Because if you hold up your phone, those become glasses. So I had it right here, and I was like, okay, I can see now. So we drove to exit 12 on 400. Mm-hmm. Because... Uh, I was going to ask you, was there a place after a concert you would go to, like like a certain place? Because for us, it was the racetrack that was on exit 12A, or uh, 12B. We religiously, after a show, went to Waffle House yeah. every time. We would go to the even same. If we did, even if we didn't have money. Like, we yeah. would fucking figure it out. Yeah, we would just go to the same uh, racetrack, buy snacks, or, like, the guy would be, like, changing out all the old food, and we'd just buy that. Yeah. And we'd hang out in the parking lot for, like, two fucking hours. And, uh, yeah, it was fun as shit. There was yeah. a lot of good memories. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the devil a, – a lot of shit happened at that devil driver show. <laughs> uh, fucking um, – You were dancing with the devil, dog. Yeah, man. Because, like, when we left, uh, so we both uh, – me and my buddy, um, we lied to our uh, my mom and then his grandma because he lived with his grandma. We lied to them and said, like, oh, no, yeah, we'll be with, like, uh, we'll be back soon. Like, around, like, one. Cool. And uh, our friend, she was over 18, because remember the curfew shit? We couldn't drive after curfew. Mm-hmm. Uh, she drove us, because she was 19 at the time. Um, We drove his grandma's van, and right when we got to that exit, the tire just exploded. And when we hit the ground with the rim, it heated up the lug nuts, to made it and made it like almost in fucking impossible to take off. Oh god! So we were on the side of the highway for like three hours. Uh, and like we called the police and they're like, "Just change the tire." And we're like, "I mean, it's, can we get someone out here to help us out? Because it's fucking like it's on there. <laughs> we tried so many times." Mm-hmm. Um, and it got to the point where I called uh, at the time my dad, and it was like four in the morning. He he was like, well, "Where are you?" I'm like, "Yeah, exit 12. He's like, "Were you supposed to be home like three hours ago?" I was like, yeah. Um, yeah, we had a flat tire. Yeah. But no, so, um, I mean, we were not going to make it home at the time. So, yeah, we were on the side of the highway for three hours. We finally got the wheel off, put the donut on. And the reason we got in trouble was because the next day we had those Georgia gra- uh, high school graduation tests. Mm-hmm. So I still went to school, and I fell asleep during it. Oh, wow. And I woke up, like, with, like, 20 minutes still left on the clock, and I just did the whole thing. I still passed. <laughs> and my buddy was like, yeah, I'll just do retakes. And I was like, wait, there's fucking retakes? So I didn't know that. I thought it was like, it wasn't done. Like, if you weren't there for it, you failed it. Yeah. But he was like, no, if you, next week they do the retakes for the people that were out. No. Oh. I was like, you, and you didn't tell me? I could have stayed <laughs> home and slept, you fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Dude. Um, and then how many times have you gone to school smelling just like alcohol and weed? Uh, Not from you, just from like being at a concert. Oh, like every fucking show yeah. that I went to on the school night. I remember uh, the thing that used to always annoy me was uh, 
when you'd go back to school the next day after a show and your ears cannot stop ringing. <laughs> so you're just like, what? Like well, we were dumb. We should have wore ear protection. Oh, dude, I'm I'm pretty much deaf as yeah. it is. Like there's there's some fucking days where I'm like I can't. Well, it, it might it might be my fucking ADHD too. But no, I mean, it's it's too, it's, yeah. it's also just the fact that sometimes I'm like, what the fuck? I felt so old because we went to go see uh uh, uh like two three years ago we went to go see uh fucking Slayer mm-hmm. uh, in Virginia. Uh, my buddy lived up there, so we went up there. The the boys we all went. It's the four of us. The old crew got back together, and we went out there. And uh, the night before, we got completely fucking shit faced. Um, so we did not do as much moshing as we wanted to. Yeah, but we felt so old because we literally circled up and we're like, "All right, who brought the earplugs? Here we go. You gotta let it sit in there for a second. All right, okay. All right, we're good. Time to enjoy the show." <laughs> Meanwhile, we see like these little shithead kids running by us, and that was us back in the day. Yeah, running to the very front, standing in front of the fucking wall of like. Of, of amps and everything. Getting covered in people's sweat. And yeah. Shit. Oh, God, dude. You stunk so bad afterwards. That reminds me, dude. Whenever, um, when we went to that, like, 08 Summer Slaughter tour, mm-hmm. I remember one of the memories I had it was, like, right before we, we right before we saw, the, like, the closing act. I think it was, like, the third to last band that played was Born of Osiris. Mm-hmm. And this is when they had just dropped, like, their second album, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I was like up there, like close to the stage, because we like I remember at one point we were near the back, we we're yeah. in the middle near like the like the the mosh pit. Then at one point we we're in the front, you know, mm-hmm. like because you know you you get around like throughout the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was next to this fucking like six foot seven giant black dude, and then as the as like the band was playing, you know, we're all like cheering, like yeah, yeah. He had his arms up, and then his armpit would just slam into oh, me. Oh yeah! And I was just like, "Oh my god!" And yeah. then I just feel all of it on the back of my neck. I'm Ugh. like, "Ugh!" And then I, I like just bam, bam, like multiple mm-hmm. times. I'm like, "Oh god!" <laughs> I'm just... yeah. And then you go to the fucking like bathroom to try to clean yourself up and shit, and that bathroom was fucking god awful, yeah, filthy, it was disgusting. I've I've still yet to go to the new masquerade. Mm, yeah, I've never been to it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I ever will go to another show, like a metal show. Because the thing is, like, I loved metal growing up. Metal yeah. show was metal shows were awesome. Listening to new metal bands was fun. But for me, like, I guess it just didn't really, yeah. it doesn't resonate with me as much anymore. I guess it, it's that. To me, I had to really want to go to it. Like, if it was like a um, fucking... Um, like I missed it this time around, but they're not really even metal anymore. Uh, Devil Wears Prada, or they weren't even metal; they were like hardcore or whatever. Yeah, but uh, like heavier stuff. Now they're like I like their new stuff. It's a lot like lighter, mm-hmm. um, a lot more singing in it. Um, a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's the fucking stupid." Nah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, I think I would just have to really care about the band still to go see it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess our taste, yeah, like you said, our tastes have evolved. Um, because I want to go see uh, what's that one band? Um. My buddy told me about them, and, and they're fucking great. Uh, Leprous. Mm. Uh, it's like, I think they're like Swedish or something shit like that. Yeah. That guy can <laughs> fucking sing, dude. Like You got to hit them up. Um, they're great. Okay. They're fucking awesome. Yeah, I've noticed like throughout the, the years, I kind of like, like I listen to a mm. lot of like modern like funk and soul music, which yeah. is just like my go-to now. And then, of course, I listen to rap. I listen to, like, more, yeah. like, underground rap groups or just, like, lesser known. Like, some mainstream rap is okay. Uh, but, like, for me, I, I really develop the taste of finding stuff that's different. Like, yeah. I really want to listen to artists that think outside the normal realm or some people that really go deep into, like, perfecting a certain type of genre. Yeah. Because, like, there's a... There's a uh, there's bands that really try to bring back the old school genres mm-hmm. and try to make those like sound as if they were from that time, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like Joey Quinones, like he he does uh Oh yeah, yeah. yeah like Fuck he, yeah, dude. He does such a good job of doing that old school mm-hmm. kind of like um you know, like Zoot Suit era mm-hmm. fucking like music, soul music, you know? And then um there's also like there's newer. A, what is it? Los Chicanos. They're pretty good too. Yeah, and then like there's a lot of people that do like modern takes on old school kind of stuff. Like like when uh when uh 
when uh, Silk Sonic did their oh, album. That was actually, I fucking love that shit. Yeah, dude. like they did like this really yeah. awesome kind of throwback feel. Like Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. I was listening to Anderson Pack like way before he yeah, got. Yeah, he's great. He, he did like a, his, uh, his. That tiny it? desk thing. Uh, well, let me think. Uh, yeah, his tiny desk was fucking amazing. Yeah. But I remember his Oxnard album was really good. And then he did one right after that that was really good too. Um, And then like the same with rap. There's a lot of newer rap that mm-hmm. I like. I've been enjoying some of like the newer like Mexican artists that are coming out. Like yeah. some of their stuff has been really entertaining because I like seeing that these newer artists are taking from older artists and mm-hmm. like evolving it into something new. And that's what I enjoy the most about a music is like I don't always want to just listen to what I'm comfortable yeah. or what I've always been comfortable listening to. I want to listen to something different. I like to. <laughs> experience new stuff at work um i do the i do spotify for all like our, our office and everything um it's just four of us guys in there uh we dumb boys um and uh one of our uh my buddy i told you about him he's this older jewish guy mm-hmm. um and he was like fucking in the he was in the scene back in the day like he was he grew up like he he was born like in phoenix and then he grew up like uh, in new york and shit yeah and he was around when like all these like small fucking like hole in the wall podunk venues and he's like oh yeah i saw you know the fucking you know i think he said like the ramones or something like when they were like like coming up yeah and i saw him like play this like fucking venue and it cost like a dollar to get in and shit it was fucking crazy um but he listens to all this like like i'm I'm assuming he used to be like big stoner guy back in the day like like drugs like yeah fuck Mm -hmm. yeah bro um because like one of his favorite bands of course is the grateful dead uh he yeah, but no, he has a, like, I told him, I was like, bro, you can sell these bitches and get, like, a lot of money, probably. He has these, like, limited edition Grateful Dead ties he wears to work. What the fuck? Yeah, they're, li- like, they don't make them anymore. You have to buy them, like, from, like, a private seller and shit now. Whoever, mm-hmm. whoever bought them then has them. He still has all of them. He has a, a Grateful mug, like, uh, cup that he's had, like, for the past, like, I think he said, like, 20, 30 years. <laughs> um and yeah, and he's like, and he always brings up like the weirdest fucking bands. I'm like, now you're just making shit up, bro. He's like, oh, you never said it of like Slippery Banana. I'm like, no, that's not a fucking band. <laughs> he's like, yeah, they're up there with like, uh, like dog barf and shit like that. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, there's some, there's some like, yeah. air, like I've never been super big or keen on jam bands. Jam yeah. bands are just like, like people who like love listening to mm-hmm. like Fish or Three Eleven and shit. Like I'm like, no, yeah. it's just not really for me. Don't get me wrong. I like some of the weirder sounds, you know, like I, like I listen to, uh, a, I've listened to Ween albums before. That's Ween is, Ween, yeah. Ween is weird, but yeah. they have like some really cool stuff. And then like, you know, there's Michael Johnston and, um, uh, um, uh, well, I, what's it, what's his name? Uh, what's his fucking name? Something Wilson. He's the one that sings rock and roll McDonald's. You know what I'm talking about? Like, rock, rock and, and roll, roll McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I love listening to weird shit. It's yeah. fucking entertaining. Um, but like all those, I, I like those artists that are coming out that are like, they embrace that weird. And like, uh, mm-hmm. what's that one guy? The like tiger or something or some shit like that. Who? Uh, um, he's like a new, uh, up and coming. Like he's like a rapper. He plays the guitar. He's a black dude. God, what the fuck is his name? Oh, Thundercat. Yeah, Thundercat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Thundercat. Like, um, mm-hmm. dude, I, yeah, I've been listening to the Thundercat for fucking a while now. Yeah. He's the one. He's the one that I was like, I need to get back into like playing bass because he's so intricate on that bass. Yeah. Dude, he plays a six string Ibanez bass, mm-hmm. and this thing is fucking massive. And the way he flies on that fretboard on mm-hmm. it, because his his style is so fucking intricate, but he's so like in tune with like how music is made. Yeah. Because he comes from like a family of musicians. Because I know his brother's like a famous drummer mm-hmm. too. Cause like his brother plays in bands, kind of like how like the Roots are. Like they're like yeah, they're like yeah. bands that do like big performance kind of s stuff. Yeah. And Thundercat is famously known for being uh, a part of a lot of different productions on uh, on different songs. Like he was a part of the production uh, on a couple of songs on Kendrick Lamar's "The Pimp of Butterfly." Mm. He's worked with other artists on some other stuff. Yeah, like he's, he's been on a lot of shit. Like, yeah, he he did recently. He did a song with the Gorillas mm-hmm. that was really good. And uh, he's worked with uh, Kelly Uches. She's really yeah. good. Dude, I think it's, I think like, I him, love 
fucking artist is like yeah. that, dude. For him, like, it's, if I was that guy, like, and I got to do a song with, like, the Gorillas, mm-hmm. bro, I'd be like, I fucking made it. <laughs> I <laughs> I love how I've gotten to that point where, like, I don't give a shit how, like, feminine or girly a fucking song is. If it fucking, like, if it bops, it fucking bops, yeah. dog. Because, like, whenever that fucking, uh, Whenever Kali Uchis dropped that uh, Delapatia song, I was like, oh, this is my fucking jam, dude. What song? Huh? I don't think I've heard it yet. Delapatia. Like, it's like, uh, it's telepath in Spanish? Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't think I've heard it yet. Oh, God, dude. I love this song. It's yeah. such a fucking jam. And then, um, obviously, like, sometimes you'll be on Spotify and you get hit with a little, like, like all f- like all female K-pop. And you're like, dude, this fucking song. Oh uh, yeah, like what's that goes. one song? Uh, Red the, Velvet is fucking great. Uh, uh, there's that one band. They uh, Fifty Fifty, like, not Fifty Fifty. It's another uh, K-pop like uh, it's like an all girl band shit. They do um, God, Blackpink, mm-hmm. that band. Yeah, and they yeah. have like two or three fucking bangers. Yeah. Dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the other day I was annoying. Den- <laughs> the other day I, I was annoying Denise because I was just like, honestly, I I kind of like started investigating. I was listening to a podcast and you're like, dude, one of the most underrated genres is '90s electronic music because some of it was such a fucking like there were mm-hmm. such jams. And then they brought up um, they brought up uh, Aqua Lollipop. <laughs> you remember Aqua Lollipop? Yeah, it's the one. It's like whoa. Oh, I'm the candy man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, it's the, uh they're the ones that sang the Barbie Girl song, but mm-hmm. they had other songs that were just yeah. fucking jams. No, the the music genre that I started like listening more because of TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um and it's because uh uh this um there's this like guy, he's a DJ. Yeah. And he like cuts and mixes a bunch of he just goes to like all right, I go to, I went to a thrift store and uh, I picked out three random albums to see if we got any bangers on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes through it, and he's like, oh, fuck yeah, this song's going to be great. And he just fucking cuts that shit and makes a really good song. Is it like a white dude? With yeah, like, it's a white dude. With glasses and yeah. like much. Yeah, yeah, I've seen this guy's yeah, work. But um, uh, it's that genre of like, uh, it's like the like the synthy, um, like poppy Japanese music. Mm-hmm. And it's that one song that ever, like you heard all over TikTok and on on shit is that stay with me yeah god that song fucking slaps yeah dude. that's dude city yeah. pop from japan that's what it is city pop city yeah, pop yeah, yeah. yeah city pop is the fucking shit dude yeah. there's a lot of genres i would love to talk about yeah because like i've I, it just reminds me of old anime like uh like uh also for anybody that wants to get into a lot of music history stuff listen to no dogs in space oh, they, yeah. they have some great episodes on like the dead kennedys and yeah. like and uh, the Misfits, like uh, they, I think the first season was mostly punk music, yeah. And then the second season they uh, started going into like the more alternative. Yeah, I think scene. right now they're talking about the monks. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we're just gonna keep plugging them, and then one day they'll say hi to us. I doubt it. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it because someone one like day. no, let me dream. <laughs> they, it's because I know I know them. Like yeah. they're they're definitely in the realm of like we want. Like like they're they're great comedians, but yeah. they definitely don't delve to the depths that we go to sometimes because we say some fucked up shit and like without repercussion because we're relatively we're yeah we're, 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 we're unknown as fuck. Yeah, but once we get that uh, like once we get the you know that that big wave of new followers, we're gonna get canceled <laughs> almost immediately. Yeah, but the problem is like it's gonna be I, a good run, guys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't even like I don't even think it's gonna be that bad. I don't think we're gonna get canceled or anything. Nah. I think it's more more or less of like. We just have to be careful of clearing the air of like, guys, this is yeah. all in good fun. Like, this is what, like, we are going to talk about what we genuinely believe in. Yeah. But anything that we say that contradicts that, that's why we're saying it. Because it's funny. It's yeah. funny to say the things that we don't believe. Because, like, whenever we joke about being, like, um, if we uh, if we ever joke about being, um, what's the fucking word? Racist? Um, no, uh, of, of, of saying things that are considered racist or saying things that are considered um, like sexist, racist. Yeah, sexist. That's what anti Semitic, yeah, anti Chinese. Yeah, an, uh, anti. No, I like, take that back. I'm fully racist. Anti uh, greaseball. Yeah. Like, you know, all that <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, we. Bunch don't. of fucking meatballs. <laughs> Uh, and all them damn Rougarous down in New Orleans. <laughs> that's a throwback. Yeah, that's a fucking deep throwback. I don't know if we're going to be able to have it. 
Like, I don't you know, can say Ruguru. I probably. <laughs> if they listen to the episode, they'll know it's nothing. It's nothing bad. <laughs> yeah. But no, fucking. Uh, We're coming near the end of this episode. I'm starting to realize <laughs> that we really haven't really cracked much jokes. We've kind of been on topic too much, and I don't like it. Nah, it's time to like say some either. racist things. Yeah. No, I I was gonna say um I need to get one of my buddies on here, one of my coworkers. Yeah. Um, he grew up um uh, with his, uh going to Jaws with his dad, mm-hmm. and his dad was a DJ, and like this motherfucker, he said like yeah I was like eight or like nine years old and I was going to strip clubs setting up helping my dad set up his sound systems and everything what the fuck yeah and like he's he's got some like weird fucking music in his head dude like he listens to all sorts of shit he's really into like old like like uh oh what is it it's that fucking like Jamaican like you know the what's the and it's what, like reggae? Not reggae. It's like that, like really upbeat shit. Remember that uh, uh, that one I sent you about the Jamaican ice cream truck? Oh, is it like the I I know what you're talking about. It's so it's like this like style they do where they literally have these massive sound systems. Yeah, it's like a major laser, but like not as new. Yeah, yeah. like every song is straight up like. Yeah. <laughs> but like uh, <laughs> so Mexican music. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, but like, he's got some wild stories. Like I remember he was telling me, um, his dad back in the day, he was setting up for a show and to get the, he would like get out there and get the crowd riled up too. And him and a a couple of his friends at the time, they all dressed up like as the village people and they were doing like a little like dance out in in the crowd and everything. Yeah. And he pulled up a video of it because someone took a video of it. It's like old, like grainy nineties and shit. Mm -hmm. One of the people that his dad was dancing with was Paul Rudd. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. what Paul Rudd and they were <laughs> like and it was like before your, he got like big or anything your dad's getting down with Ant-Man dog yeah. like uh. tell him to hit you up hey Paul Rudd <laughs> explain yourself <laughs> why were you there dog <laughs> he knows why <laughs> But no, I'll, I'll have to see if I can get him on here or if we go. Is there dancing? Ooh, I'm starting to grow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> A girl walks up to him. Oh, I'm shrinking. <laughs> oh, God! So that was constant. You heard it here first. <laughs> Paul Rudd's gay. <laughs> Paul Rudd is gay. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Shout out Spider Man. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Oh God! Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to go from this. This has been a very tamed episode. Yeah, it has up until the end, but whatever. Yeah. Um, we'll see who sticks to the whole thing. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, I fucking. <laughs> uh, what can you do? Yeah. Anyways, thanks again for listening, guys. It's been fucking real. Yeah. Um, again, if you've made it this far, follow us on Instagram at yeah. the Night Funk Podcast. And then uh, you can find us on uh, YouTube and TikTok and all those other fucking places. Yeah. So, you know, uh, keep a lookout for us. And then also, if you want to follow us on our personals, I'm at Handful of Pedro on and Instagram. I'm also in the woods. And uh, yeah, again, if uh, you're listening to the audio version, every Friday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts. And um, if you're there, uh, we always have an online poll of what's got you in a night funk. Mm -hmm. So, or what's got you in a funk, I should say. Yeah. So uh, let us know what's got you in a funk and maybe we can talk about it in a future episode. Uh, As always, thank you again for any new followers and support uh, for people that have been listening. And uh, also, guys, hit up the comments section. Let us know. Uh, YouTube episodes coming soon. So hopefully this is already going to be on YouTube by the time this comes out. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, shout out to you, uh, uh, your uh, your brother in law. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Give He's me a, up a Taco Mac. Yeah, Big yeah, yeah. Fan. We're gonna make him a shirt. Yeah, we're gonna make him a shirt. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna say uh, uh, like the idea I told you. Uh, I stood inside of a shopping bag and all I got was this shirt. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I still don't understand what that means. Remember, it's the from the gay thing. Oh, yeah. You stand inside a shopping bag so you can't see you gluck gluck on someone. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I performed gay sex and all I got was this shirt. <laughs> we'll make a stain on it. <laughs> uh, no, nah, no, right. nah, he ain't about that gay shit. <laughs> <Mm-mm>. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks again for listening, guys. Right. Uh, give Bye. us a follow. Give us some love. A fucking Discord, I guess. Yeah, do it. We don't have a Patreon. What if we did? I'm selling feet pics. <laughs> 
All right. Later, guys. Bye. Uh. <laughs>